Hero series review without spoilers. A group of seemingly unrelated individuals all over the world suddenly seem to possess special powers and as they try to come to terms with this life-changing detail they form alliances they are hunted and in general they go on adventures this show is the exact right way to approach something with a lot of people with superpowers. A lot of time is spent on all of these characters. Granted, a few of the characters are dropped and or disappear for lengths of time, but the vast majority are well developed, they're sufficiently diverse and interesting, and you care about them, and they change over the course of the four seasons. No jokes about the restaurant, I think it is. Also, the powers are well thought out, and they're very creatively used some of the time. There are parts of the show that I would describe as downright brilliant, and that is not a term that I like to use lightly. The various characters, through them, we get all the different reactions to this sort of revelation. We have the tough cheerleader, Claire Bennett, who isn't particularly happy to find that she has a power, and she basically just feels like it makes her stand out all the more. It adds to how much she feels like an outcast as she is a teenager. Then we have Hiro Nakamura, who wants to use his power to become a superhero. He is the and yes, people have been joking about that name, and the show itself does it, so, yeah. He's a comic book geek, as is Tim Kring, the creator. And, you know, he... So, he embodies that aspect. There are ones that use the powers for criminal activities. Basically, we get the entire rainbow of different... the entire spectrum of different reactions to this sort of thing. The acting tends to be good. One more character that I should maybe bring up is Mohinder, who finds out that this man murdered my father, and that's kind of his drive for much of it. He researches into these powered people and tries to, you know, find out what exactly caused it and, in general, uncover the mysteries of it. The cast are well chosen. I was surprised by Greg Grunberg, J.J. Abrams' pet, who seems to get cast on everything J.J. does. This is pretty much the first time he's been in something, well, other than maybe Hollow Man, that wasn't because of J.J., and he actually does quite well. It's a little tough to buy that he's a cop, but other than that, he does do good acting in this. We have some very compelling antagonists, including Sylar, and I'm not going to give away too many details about him, but 
that does lead nicely into the show really has a lot of different genres covered quite nicely. In a single episode, it can move between different genres. With Claire, we have the high school drama, love story kind of thing. In general, there's drama. With Silar, we have very dark horror. We have some sci-fi. And with Hero, we have some comedy. There are comedy with various of the characters. Hero, it's a bit you know, slapstick, silly, goofy comedy kind of thing. And because there are this many different genres, you're likely to find at least one to really like, and at least some characters to really get into. You might not like all of them, but there's bound to be someone that you like, and if you're lucky, they'll, they'll last long in the show. I never cared much for the score, at least the main theme, but others might. The show takes you to many different environments and even different time periods, and this leads nicely into talking about a couple of the different powers. I'm not going to give them all away, but just to give you an idea of what you can expect from this. There is regeneration, time-space manipulation, telekinesis, telepathy, and I think that's all that I'm going to be giving away. The show does sometimes stoop to the lowest common denominator and just try to throw some sensuality and sex at you and it tends to work, they're really good at it, but Usually, the show is about the drama, the characters, very much about the characters, and just these journeys that they go on, figuratively and literally. The second season, I would say, is not as good as the other three, but the other three really make up for it because they're excellent. I will say that there are some anticlimactic endings. In fact, there are those that would say that all the season finales are a bit anticlimactic, and some of the demises of characters are also anticlimactic. But on the whole, the show is very satisfying. And though it only got four seasons and they were kind of expecting a fifth, excuse me, the ending does work as an okay ending. It's, it's open, so, you know, you can theorize what happens after the, after what we see in the season four, fourth season finale, but it also does kind of close things off. You could imagine that the story ends soon after. There's room for fanfics, there's room for a television movie. So yeah, if this sort of thing appeals to you at all, and do note that you don't have to be a comic book geek to get into this. I watched it with my ex-fiance and she is not a comic book geek at all. I would definitely say at least give it a shot. You know, rent the first season or something. See if you like what you see. The special effects are a tad mixed, but mostly they are pretty good. And they... The writers tend to think of some pretty good battles between these powered people. We get some very unique battles that I can't think of anywhere else in this medium that we've seen. Battles like that. And again, creative use of powers. I will not, I refuse to give any of those away. You have to see them for yourself. And they, they're good at doing different matchups. You know, characters 
going, you know, following each other, going in the same direction for a while, and then they meet up with someone else and go with them for a while, so that, you know, you get many different interactions, you know, you get some, you know, people that react to each other and each other's powers in different ways. The writing is quite good. A lot of revelations, twists that really change everything, and they tend to work. I would also say that this does an impressive job at evolving the powers and keeping, you know, and, and sometimes adding to the roster of characters without it getting out of hand, without it ever getting too big for you to be able to follow, you know, what's going on. The factions are also largely easy enough, at least possible, to keep track of. Something that is a big problem with some recent, yeah, shows on television, because they just keep adding, and they keep letting the factions be mysterious, and we don't get a full handle on them, and suddenly two factions are doing battle, and we have no idea which we should root for, or what one stands for, and what the other stands for. And I suppose that is about it. So finally I will just round off by saying that the DVD sets tend to be worth it. The commentaries are informational, and funny. The the cast are very, very funny. And the we, there's also often extended and deleted scenes, which are interesting enough, though you do have to keep track of what actually did happen in the episode, you know, what is canon and what isn't. You know, the season set for the first season actually contains the unaired pilot, which is quite different in a lot of ways from the aired pilot. And the various featurettes tend to also be quite good. So that was my review of Heroes the Series. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.